So the Vandals sack Roman 410 with Al Alaric out of desperation for food. This is what it's talking about in Revelation 13, 3, about the deadly wound of the beast that had, that had healed. We look at Revelation 17, chapter 8. Behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Well, this is the demise of classical Rome. Around 500 AD, Romulus is the last emperor. And, and, and uh, Europe, without the Roman Empire, pretty much collapses. Uh, but the church continues. And the church continues to rule these kings because they're, they're Christ, Christian kings. And they follow the apostate church. Now this church of Rome is, is the very same that we see Paul writing to the epistle of the Romans. And if we look at Ezekiel 28, it's the same mentioned as the prince of Tyrus. Uh, I did a video called Babylon and said I am God, which Ezekiel 28 mentions. Because your heart is lifted up and has said I am God, I sit in the seat of God. Behold, I will bring strangers to defile thy brightness. This is in the future. They will bring you, you down to the pit. Thou was perfect till iniquity was found in thee. This is the wickedness of the, uh, the mother of harlots, the church of Rome. We look at the mark of the beast in chapter 13 um, and chapter 17. Verse 5, it says, Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots, abomination of the earth, the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. She has a golden cup in her hand full of abominations. So we're looking at verse 4 and 5. The golden cup in her hand, on her forehead was written a name, Mystery Babylon, which is exactly the same, or alludes to, Sixteen, verse sixteen, which says he causes all the world to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, which is exactly the same as we've seen the whore of Babylon, the woman dressed in scarlet. That's the scarlet of sin and the purple of riches. The golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. So this is the Christian church who's fallen into apostasy. <laughs> and fornicating with all the abominations of the heathens. We already saw, I mean, I already did a video called Abomination of Desolation, where it's a specific thing that the uh, worship of other gods and uh, their idols is an abomination, which is what here is, verse 5 is alluding to, the abominations of the earth. We know from history that Constantine brought Sol Invictus into the churches. He, he uh, did a coup d'etat of Christendom and created what's called orthodoxy and it basically incorporated the, Rome, the Roman worship of Easter which is the spring equinox. So now you've got equinoxes and solstices which are the way that the beast is worshipped because it says that the whole world worshipped the beast. So we have apostate Easter and apostate Christmas. So if we look at um, Deuteronomy 6 and 8, when God talks about his law, obviously the law is for sinners and the law is the transgression of the law. And he that commits sin is of the devil, as it says by the apostle John. So the transgression of the law is, is clearly the worship of other gods and, and idolatry, which is the first and second of the Ten Commandments in Sinai which the saints haven't come to because they've received through baptism the spirit of righteousness. But the rest of the world are under the law. And it says in Deuteronomy 6 and 8, it says, Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand and upon the frontlets between thine eyes. So it's in, it's in the forehead and on, on the hand again, see the mark. It's Exodus 3, uh, 13, 16, And it shall be a token upon thine hand and for frontlets between thine eyes. For by the strength of the hand of the Lord that brought thee out of Egypt. So the laws in your hand and between your eyes, according to these verses. Ezekiel 9.4 4 
It says, Go through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark on the foreheads of men that sigh and cry for the abominations done in the midst thereof. Look at chapter 8 of Ezekiel. He's brought into the secret chambers where the priests of Israel were committing abominations. Verse 9 says, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So he went and saw, and he beheld all kinds of creeping and abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel. And he describes the priests of the house of Israel having censers and thick clouds of incense going up from them. And again, weeping women for Tammuz. And again, the priests between the porch and the altar had their backs towards the temple of the Lord and their faces towards the east and they worshipped the sun towards the east. Revelation 13, 18 Here is wisdom, let him that has understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is 603 score and 6 666 So we're in 1 Kings 10 now Verse 14, now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 603 score and six talents of gold, 666, says King Solomon. Chapter 11, but Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites, the Zidonians and Hittites. It came to pass that when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord. Solomon went after Ashtaroth, goddess of the Zidonians. So he, he created what's known as the Mount of Corruption, and, wish, and, a, and a worship of Baal and Ashtaroth came into to Israel and stayed there, pretty much. Um, and as we have, like Isaiah 44, talking about the Queen of Heaven, and Jeremiah 9, talking about the Queen of Heaven. This is what we call Easter, when he observed the spring equinox. This is the goddess that the Catholic Church now worships as Madonna or Mary, um, as the primacy goddess of their apostasy. In Daniel 3, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, that's 60, and the breadth thereof six, so that's 60 by six, which is another reference 603 score and six is the image that is set up of idolatry.